Good day, Tinkercad friends. I am back with the second part of our Wilder Vermont Historical Building Project for 3D Vermont. What I did right now was I clicked this little button and I chose Duplicate. That way, if I ever don't like what I did, I can always get back to the original. So I'm going to hit Tinker this and get inside my copy, and let's start adding some more cool parts to our awesome building. If you want a quick review, I am using Google Earth to create a historic building for the 3D Vermont project. Right now I have dropped a street view icon in and I'm working from that street view image to try and make an exact replica of this building. The images are skewed and we had to work with a cool little tool and we used the nifty little page ruler to find out how many pixels things were in our image so notice this is 160 pixels wide. And then I was able to type those into the spreadsheet that I've given me in the description so that we can build our project accurately. Right now I want to build the entry. And for this, I'm actually going to build it by just using my eyeballs. So notice I'm evenly between the windows and I'm about up to that little gray bar. We'll start by bringing out a cube squish it so it's between the windows that's pretty nice I'm gonna shrink it down so it's just one millimeter above the bar remember everything's in millimeters even though the real world is feet and inches and then I'm gonna choose 15 for how deep this piece goes I'm gonna create the two rails real quick I'm gonna do control D I'm gonna shrink a little and then I'm going to type 2.5 for one. I'm going to grab the other one, shrink the other way, type the number 2.5 for it, and notice they snap right to the right location. I'm going to do Control D again, and then this one, I'm just going to drag across until it meets the other side. And I want it to be a half millimeter thick, so I'm going to pull down a little, but then I'm going to type 0.5 for how thick I really want it to be. So that is stair number one. If I peek back at the picture, notice the stairs poke out for the first two stairs. So I'm gonna simply click on this little guy and pull him out two millimeters. So there's one, there's two millimeters. If we double check, oops, he was 17.5, so we're gonna set him back to 17. With stair number one completed, the magic happens. When you do control D, Make sure your grid is at a half millimeter and lift it up that half millimeter. Push it in two clicks, which is a whole millimeter. Do not touch anything else and then simply do control D again and again until you have stairs all the way up to that last little bit of the lip. Just like that, we have almost instantly created that beautiful little bit of stairs. Let's take time to group our stairs. And I'm gonna make that even easier by hiding my building. And now I can grab my stairs. And when I group them, they turn into one nice solid shape. I can make them gray and bring the rest of my project back. If we look back quickly, we notice that our little roof is about the same. It maybe pokes out a little bit past it. Let's add that really quickly with just a rectangle. But first let's do the work plane so that the box or rectangle shows up where we want. Let's squeeze it a little and then change it to two millimeters thick. And then I'm gonna squeeze it a little this way. I changed my two accidentally. And I wanna make this 18. I'm gonna use the arrow keys to nudge it up so it's just a little above the windows. And then I also noticed that it was about one millimeter inside these windows on each side, maybe a little more than that. So let's click and shrink that till we're happy. And I think I'm gonna say that's good. Let's look at it from this side. I'm gonna say that is good as well. And then of course, since the bottom was 17, I'm gonna make this I'm going to make this 16 so it won't quite overhang the last stair. Actually, I'm going to make this 15. 
if we look back at Google Earth, you can see there's some really cool carvings and a little notch out of here. Let me show you how we're going to make that happen. Start by hiding your building so that's out of the way. I'm going to set my work plane to the very front of the project and I'm going to bring out a cool new shape under the featured shapes called an extrusion. Now this thing is huge when it shows up but we're just going to hold shift and shrink it to a manageable size. You want it to be somewhere around the two millimeter size. I'm going to keep my grid at 0.5. I'm going to use the amazing fit view to selection, roll back a couple clicks and move to the other side. Cause remember we are going to cut off some of this shape using this piece. This is a super customizable part. You can just nudge it the way that you want. You can use the little handles to change the shape. I'm going to pull mine down because I want it to just round that out. And then I want this to come in a half click as well. So that's going to be the part that I'm going to cut. But then also there was a notch. Let me show you how to make the notch happen. I'm going to go back to the all or the basic shapes and I want to make it with the wedge. When I bring the wedge out, it is monstrous. So we're going to fit the view to the size of that little guy. We're going to look at it from the top because I want this handle and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to look at it from the front and I'm going to hold down shift and shrink it till it's about that two millimeter size. And that way it'll be able to cut in. I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it. And remember I said I wanted to cut with this. So let's zoom in with the fit view. Let's change it to a hole. You'll notice the two parts match, and I actually like where this is gonna cut that amount, but I'm gonna raise it up another chunk, but I wanna go by point ones to get the design that I want. I think that right there is gonna make me happy. So I'm gonna grab those two pieces, making sure that it says two, and I'm going to group them. So there I'm gonna have a curved shape with a chunk and then the piece underneath. That's gonna be pretty sweet. I need to take this back to the back work plane. So I'm just going to stretch it out really long. Push it in. I don't care that it goes past because remember I made this larger. I'm going to do control D and I'm going to switch to the five millimeter grid and I'm going to take that duplicate and move it to the other side. Use the amazing flip tool and then I'm going to use the 0.1 millimeter grid to nudge them so they both look the same from the front. So here I'm pulling it in and making both of them holes. This doesn't really show up until you make them a hole. Let's get that front view again and I'm cutting just a little past and just a little past. I'm going to actually bring this in one click and now I think that those are about the same. I'm going to go one more click this way. So you can see I've got the gray that's inside left on both sides, and that looks the same. I need to do one more from the top. I'm going to do Control D, switch back to my 5 millimeters. I'm going to pull that out with the cone, and then rotate it 90 degrees. And now it's the right height. I just need to move it into location. And I'm going to do that by switching back to the one millimeter mark. And then from the side view, I'm going to just pull it out till it looks a lot like that front one did. So you can see here, I've got a little bit of it left. Need to switch to the point one grid so that I can be more accurate. There's my cone that I'm lifting with. And I think that is going to be about the same. And here is where all of this work comes to fruition. When you hit group, it cuts out that amazing roof shape just like that. I'm going to turn it gray. Maybe I'll choose the same gray so that the project all looks the same. Let's do a show all and bring all those parts back. I am really, really happy with that. I'm going to grab it all and I'm going to group it to make it one piece. Let's shut off the work plane so that it's not in our way and just take a look at how awesome our building is turning out. Really quickly, let's return to our picture. Notice there's a 
a little bit of a brickwork here on both sides and then a pillar. Let's add those in really quickly. I'm going to start by putting the work plane back on the wall. and Let's bring out a normal box. I'm going to just shrink it with the black handles. I noticed that they came up to about the window height. Let me use this black handle to bring it to this height. And this black handle to bring it across. I'm going to shrink it in to about there. And then let's move it across and see what it looks like. I'm happy with that, but I need to move it to the left edge. So I'm going to just grab both of these pieces. And I want to align it. Oop, it's got the whole building. So I'm going to ungroup. And now I'm going to grab both of these pieces. And I'm going to align them with the left edge. Let's do a quick fit view to selection, make sure we're happy with that. I'm going to pull it up so it's not overlapping. Do W, and when I hit this, I can drop it so it's exactly at the right work plane in that direction as well. I'm going to do Control D, and let's move this piece over to the other side as well. Man, that point one makes the move slow. But it does make it pretty easy to line up with. I'm going to do Shift and select those two parts and group them. And that allows me to do Shift and select these two parts. And I want to align that right side. And I want to group those as well. Adding the pillars is super simple. Let's do W so we can set the pillars right where we want. Bring out a cylinder. I'm going to set the sides to 64 so they're really round. I'm going to hold Shift and one white corner and shrink them all at once. When I'm happy with the size, I'm going to simply place it, stretch it, lift it. And I am digging my little front entryway. Let's make it gray. I could also make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to just shrink it a little. Lift it up so it's touching. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to switch back to a 1mm grid. Do Control D and let's use the arrow keys to move it across. Zoom in on that side. Make sure it is connected as well. And that is pretty spiffy. You can arrange them however you want. But this is how you can build your awesome project using Tinkercad. Let's call this the end of lesson two, friends. I hope you enjoyed the steps and the skills that we added today, learning how to do the cool stair steps and the awesome shapes for the roof. Friends, if you like this movie, please hit that like button. If you haven't hit subscribe, what are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button. If you want to know when I'm making a new movie, make sure you hit notifications. And if you have a question or a comment, please put it down below. I hope you had fun with this one, and thanks for watching. Thank you.